Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are discussing submitting tasks. This is the fourth topic of the chapter. If you have not done yet, I would strongly recommend to go over previous three parts of the chapter. In this video, we will see a new method called submit and we will also see how that is different from the method we have already seen which was execute. From the previous videos, we have seen how to ask executor service to run tasks in a thread. We have used the execute method. Note that we have not assigned the output of execute method to any variable. That's because execute does not return anything. This way of having the job done is called fire and forget, where you ask someone to do a task, but you don't care when it is finished or if it has finished successfully. Now, what if the task returns some value and we want to get hold of that. That is when the submit method comes handy. The main difference between execute method and submit method is that submit method returns a feature object. The feature object represents the task and we can get the state of the task at any given point of time. And moreover, that object can also be used to get the returned value from the tasks that is running. We will discuss future object in more detail in this video. Before I do that, let me show you the various methods in executor service that you need to be aware of for the exam. The first one is our execute method that we have already seen. This method takes a runnable task but does not return anything and the task is executed at some point in the future. Second is a submit method which takes a runnable task and returns a future object representing the task. Since runnable doesn't return anything, we cannot get the result back, but the future object in this instance can be used to get more information about the task, such as we can say sleep for 10 seconds and then check if the task is done. Or we can even set a timeout to cancel if the task does not finish in that time period. We will see how to do that in our next slide. The third is again a submit task. This method takes a callable task as input. Callable is very similar to runnable. The difference is that callable task will be returning something back. This submit method return a future object and we can use the future object to get the value returned from the callable. The fourth one is invoke all. This method takes a list of callable tasks and wait for all of them to finish. This call is a blocking call, which means unless all the tasks are finished, the control in the code will not move forward. And once the tasks are finished, the method will return a list of future in the same order in which we gave the list of tasks to it for it to execute. The fifth method that we will look into is invoke any. It takes a list of callable tasks and wait for at least one to finish. It returns the result of the finished task. When any one of the tasks finishes, then it cancels the remaining unfinished tasks. Now let's look into the feature object. As I have mentioned before, the feature object can be used to get more information about a given task. Future is actually an interface. For the exam, you don't need to know how the class is implemented, but you just need to know once we have the future instance, what information can we get from it? The very first one is is done and it returns a Boolean. This method returns true if the task is completed. Completion may be due to the normal termination, that is the task completed successfully, or the task could have thrown exception, or task could have been canceled. In all these cases, this method will return true. The next method is is canceled. This method returns true if the task was canceled before it completed normally. The third method is cancel. This method attempts to cancel a task, returns true if it successfully canceled, false if it could not cancel it 
or the task already finished. The fourth one is get. This method waits for the necessary computation to complete and then retrieves the result that was returned from the task. This method will wait until the task is complete, no matter how long the task takes. The fifth one is another variant of get. In this variant, we can actually give a timeout and say that if the task has finished, then return the result of the task but if it does not finish in the provided time period then just return back without getting the result now let's jump into the IntelliJ and see an example the program that i'm going to write is i am going to create a task that will increment the number 500 times and in our main thread i'm going to wait until all the increment is done and then move on this is a very similar program that we have seen in the part two, which was uh, named as polling with sleep. But in this case, we will use the concurrency API. I'm going to create a package called part four. And in this, I will create a class called check result. In the main method, I'm going to declare a variable called service for the executor service. And in the try block, I'm going to get the single thread executor. And I'm going to submit a runnable task. And this task will simply increment the number from one to 500. I'll create a static variable called counter, which is what I will increment in the for loop. Since submit returns an object of future type, I'm going to assign the output of submit to a variable called result. And I'm going to use the result to wait for 10 seconds before moving on. So we have given a timeout that this is the maximum time we will be waiting for the result. And since we have a timeout, we it will throw a timeout exception, which we will catch and I will just print it out. In case the task isn't finished in that time, we will be in this code block. And I'm going to add the remaining of the exception to the method signature. So I'm not catching them, I'm just throwing it back. Now, after that statement, I'm going to print task complete. So if the task completes successfully, then the control will come here. And uh, by successfully, I mean if it completes within 10 seconds. But if the task does not complete within 10 seconds, then that will throw an exception. So we will not come to that line. So when the control flow is there, we are certain that the task has completed before the timeout happened. Now let me save and run the program. And that's the output. I wasn't expecting any different output, but this is just a different way on how to wait on a task to finish rather than doing a sleep ourselves, how we have done it in part two. Now let's jump back into the slides. In this slide, we will see how callable looks. Notice that the call method in here is returning something and it's a it's written in a generic way and this is what we will use for the tasks that want to return something back to the caller now let me jump back into the intellij i'm going to create a new class called add data and in this class i am going to add two numbers in a separate thread and this the result of those addition, I want to return it back into the main thread. And since I'm returning a result, I cannot do it with the runnable. I have to use callable. So I'll create a service with the single thread executor. And again, I'm going to submit a task to it. And I'm in this task, I'm simply going to do an addition of one and two and return the response. So this is a definition of a callable. Um, in Lambda, when we have a single line of code and that returns something, we can use something called Lambda expression. It does the exactly same thing, but it's just a concise way to write the code. So for that, I am going to get rid of the curly braces and also I'm going to get rid of the return. Just removing the white spaces as well. And that's it. That is a callable that adds one and two and returns the response of the 
expression. Now I'll assign the response of the submit to a variable called result. And then I'm going to print it out using result.get. And get method will throw some exceptions. I'm going to add those exceptions to the main method. And note that in this case, I have not the I have not given the timeout. So the call will wait for the callable task to finish and then move on. And no matter how long the callable task takes. Now I'm going to save and run the program and a result of three is returned. So this is how we get the response from the callable tasks. Let me also add a print statement before and after the code and rerun it. So the main thing that I want to demonstrate here is the get method will wait until the callable task is finished. So the output will always be same. So as you have seen previously, when we have the multi-threaded programs, the output could be a bit undetermined depending on system to system. But in this case, we'll have always have the same output. We will print the start of the main thread, we will get the result and then we'll print the end of the main thread. Now we have seen three out of five methods already. Now let's discuss the two other two methods, which is, which is invoke all and invoke any. So let's uh, go back into IntelliJ. I'm going to create a new class called multiple tasks. And in the main method, I'm going to create a callable task and this callable task will be very simple. All it does is return a string. Now I'm going to create a executor service and let's shut it down in the finally block. The first method we will see is invoke all and it takes a list of callable tasks. So I'll create a list and I'll give the same task three times. The exception thrown from invoke all, I am going to add it into the main method. And invoke all will return the list of future. So I will assign it to the variable called results. And then I'll use the for loop to go over all the result and print the output of each callable. I'll add a print statement before and also a print statement at the end of the program. So once I run the program, as you see, we start the main thread and then we get the result from all the three callable tasks that we ask executor to execute. And then finally we end the main program. So in here, the invoke all method only returned back when all the three tasks that we gave to it finished. Now let's change that invoke all to invoke any. Invoke any doesn't return a future. It will actually return the result of the task that is completed. I'll change the type to string because that's what the callable is returning. And also we'll rename result to singular. And then I'll print the result. I'll save the program and run it. So as you see, even though we asked it to run three callables. It only ran one because that's how invoke any works. It just run any one of the task and whichever finishes the earliest, it returns the response back and cancels the other two tasks. And hence the output is looking like this. There is one another topic in the book that I have skipped over as the other topics nicely fit together. So for completeness, let's have a look at that topic. So this is a screenshot of one of the previous example that we have seen already. In this case, we have submitted a runnable task and then we are using the future object to wait on the task to finish. If you do not care the value returned from the task, like in this example, we have another way to achieve the same functionality. Let's go back to the IntelliJ and see how to modify this program. So I'm in the check result class. I will comment out the get method and also the print line. Since get is gone, we don't need timeout exception anymore. So to wait for the task to finish, 
we can use the service executor and the method that we will use is await termination and in this method as well we can give a timeout until when we want the executor to wait for the task to finish the, the main difference is that previously we were waiting using the future object but in this case we are asking the executor to wait rather than the future object and also the executor service has a method called is terminated it will return true if the task has finished nicely and it returns false if the task hasn't completed i will save and run the program so the output will be same i wasn't expecting anything different but this is just a different way on how to wait on a task and this concludes the video uh, if you have liked it please hit the like button and subscribe for my upcoming videos thank you so much